is the Jesse Nash Health Center. If you're wondering who he was, when he died, or how much his family contributed to the building fund, your thoughts have wandered off in the wrong direction. Jesse Nash is alive and well, and City Scene went to talk to this living monument. How did a building get named after him? To my total astonishment, mm -hmm. the health committee of Model City uh, said that uh, they intended to uh, name the health center uh, for the uh, person who was the executive director of Model City. And it dawned on me at that time, that was me. Uh, they thought that uh, this would be the thing to do and it has become and still is uh, possibly the uh, greatest honor that has ever been bestowed upon me. Uh, I don't talk about it, but uh, no doubt about it. It's, it's, it, it overwhelmed me greatly. Jesse Nash's background reads like pages from black history. Mary Talbert, W.E.B. Du Bois, Adam Clayton Powell, Malcolm X. These are just some of the historical figures that have loomed in his life. Jesse's long history of community service began here at the Michigan Avenue Baptist Church, founded by his father, J. Edward Nash. He talked about the church and his early beginnings. The church itself had an interesting historical background in that it was one of the stations in the Underground Railroad, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, was instrumental in bringing our people to freedom uh, and then uh, on into Canada. Um, the church is a historic site now because it was a part of the Underground Railroad. Uh, being the son of uh, J. Edward Nash, I uh, had to have had some impact. He was born of slaves, so that means you're talking now to uh, a person who was just one generation removed from slavery. He felt that there was a need to mix what he called the social and the spiritual gospel, that uh, just to hold forth on Sunday and do nothing during the week, just to emphasize uh, the thereafter and forget the here and now, uh, was really a, a partial uh, message. And so he was very much concerned about the social and the spiritual gospel. My mother also made a tremendous impression on me as a little anecdote. I'll just tell you this story. Um, the distinguished person was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He came to Buffalo uh, to dedicate uh, the new federal building, which is across the street from the uh, state building in Court Street. Mm -hmm. My father uh, was uh, to give the uh, inaugural prayer and or the invocation and uh, the benediction. So my mother wanted me, little fella, to see my father sitting on the platform with then President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So my mother, uh, being very uh, aggressive and knowing her rights, there were no civil rights then as we understood them, uh, took me into the state building and took me upstairs, walked through several of the offices and posted me up into a window. And of course, that's bizarre behavior. She didn't ask anybody anything. And so finally, somebody came over to her and says, uh, what are you doing in here? She says, this is my building. I pay taxes, and I want my son to see his father down there on the platform. Well, that was irony for those people, because they looked at us. We were black, and they knew there was nobody down there black on the platform, so she had to be also crazy. So they called a policeman. And that was the beginning of my uh, contact with the, the police, which was a negative one. I, at that day, was wearing a G-Man badge, which I had gotten from collecting post toasty box tops. And I showed the policeman my G-Man badge and said, you can't arrest my mother, and he snatched me too. <laughs> and I won't tell you what almost happened after I got to be in high school. I saw that policeman again. Of all his right, many talents, much. Jesse Thank Nash chose to teach to make a living. Since 1964, he has taught sociology at Canisius College and has also yeah. held positions at the right. University of Buffalo, McMaster's University, and other institutions. In Professor Nash in prides himself in being able to join the theoretical with the practical. While he has been executive director of Model Cities, 
headed various community organizations, served as the Vice President of Affirmative Action at the University of Buffalo, he has never left the classroom. Having his back against the blackboard and meeting the challenges of students is for Jesse Nash a high. As a young musician, Jesse Nash traveled across the country. The Apollo, the Savoy, the Majestic Palace, and other famous big city night spots are familiar places to him. This musical legacy has passed to his son. Recently, the Nash family musicians played at the SS Little Rock on the waterfront. You pin me down and pin me down hard. I guess the thing that gives me the greatest joy is playing with my son. Uh, playing uh, when they allow me to play with them. Because, you know, I'm a generation away. Uh, I came up in the jazz era. I have one son who is in the new wave era. I have another son who's, who's, he's out there. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I just get a tremendous amount of pleasure uh, of uh, having a chance to sit down and uh, uh, rap musically with them. Because I don't get home often to, to sit down and have the kinds of conversations I ought to have. But we can take out the instruments and uh, we, we, we talk. The family life uh, is very pleasurable to me. The kids have gotten to a point though now where uh, they're going their own ways. I'm learning now more from them than I've ever learned from any of the books I've ever read. That's, that's an interesting learning experience, how to possess and let go, and how to let go and still uh, care, and how to care and not absorb. What kinds of things do you intend to concentrate on most in the future? I have, uh, I guess, is a deep and abiding concern. Uh, the basic problems that affect us as human beings, uh, trying to help people to understand the implications of our imperfection, trying to help people understand the implications of what it means uh, to become human. Uh, that's something that's very heavy with me. Um, I want to find ways to help people to understand how they get to be what they ultimately are in the process of being and how that affects others. My line is, a lie believed is truth and effect. And if I can make some sense out of that and communicate that to a sufficient number of people, I think that that will be uh, the kind of thing I'll be doing in the, in the future.